Was there, either then or now, mm -hmm. any risk to journalists and writers in writing about Tons this material? Of risk. Yeah. My first creative writing teacher, John Hearn, he, he experienced the violence of, of, uh, of I think, uh, we call the Suppression of Crimes Act. I was at a, a Lawrence Wright reading and years ago, this was the 9-11 anniversary, and he was talking about how the, the, the Liberty Bell is being protected. And somebody got up and said, you know, if that's what it's gonna take to keep the Liberty Bell going, I'm fine for some security guards and so on. So I just exploded. I was like, you do not wanna, in the choice between freedom and protection, choose protection. Mm. And I said, let me tell you about the Suppression of Crimes Act. And the Suppression of Crimes Act was something Jamaica instituted. And the middle class and the upper class totally went along with it because they figured we are not criminals. So it will never, they're just arresting gunmen. But then a dissident article became a crime. Then a, 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 news, a, a story critical of the government became a crime. So suddenly all these journalists and opposite politicians and so on, suddenly they start getting arrested, including my first creative writing teacher. And he got really beaten up severely. Mm -hmm. Because the problem with, with choosing protection is the def definition of a threat keeps, get re keeps getting redefined. But this was danger from the state, as it were. Yeah. But, but, but were there also, I mean, I'm thinking, for instance, of a more recent book, like uh, Roberto Saviano's book about, yeah. the, about the, the Camorra, the Camorra yeah. in, in Naples. That he said that when the book first came out, Mm -hmm. The Camorra were, thought it was kind of cool, <laughs> you know, because it made them sort of stars. Yeah. And they were actually buying copies of the book and giving it to people. Uh -huh. And then the book became this huge bestseller, and they uh -huh. thought, you know, maybe it doesn't make us look so good. <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> so, you know, so let's kill him, uh -huh. you know? It was some of the, one of the things I, I did sort of struggle with. Like, I, I'm like, yeah, I am dealing with dangerous material. Yeah. Because I remember, I know. you know, it made me think also your book of, of Suketu Mehta's book, Maximum City, yeah. where he went and studied the Bombay gangs. Yeah. And when he wrote the book, he changed people's names because yeah. he, got, he, got, he had got people to confess to being mm -hmm. hitmen and murderers, etc. Yeah. The only thing that the gangs in Bombay were angry with was mm. that he changed their names. <laughs> <laughs> well, I changed, I changed names and I changed descriptions. Yeah. I changed personalities. Yeah. Um, one, uh, uh, some of the Jamaican reviewers who think they know said um, Joe's Wales is based off Jim Brown, who was our most notorious gangster mm. in, in Jamaica's history. And, and I certainly took aspects from him, but Jim Brown isn't half Chinese, isn't no, quarter he's Chinese. Not, he's famous for his slanty for, eyes. Yeah, and, 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 <laughs> and he's certainly not, not open-minded about yeah. gay people. 